Welcome to season five of 30 Minutes with Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Yeah, welcome back. What's up with y'all? How y'all doing out there, beautiful people? <laughs> that wasn't a good intro. I mean, it was better than what Kim Burrell did because she wouldn't have called nobody beautiful. <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> That's neither what here nor there. She, you don't know what she did. You ain't see it. Yeah, I know what she did. What That's she why. Uh, why? Why we gotta talk about that? Because <laughs> you started it. No, you, you started it. These people you can't see beautiful, and it made me think of if you're how made she called in... people that she could see ugly. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. She said, "Y'all ugly." If you made it an image of God, you're beautiful. Silence. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I like to use the word that some people just aren't universally attractive. Okay, so it's not it's not calling them ugly. That's just it's another not, way to say people ugly. No, it's saying you might not be attractive to everybody, but you are attractive to somebody. There's somebody for everybody. Oh my you understand? goodness! No. All right. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> what, what are we talking about today? Goodness gracious. I'm, just saying. I'm not doing an intro no more. <laughs> I mean, because even, you know, in the Bible, like Rachel and Leah, like one of them was cuter than the other one. So even the Bible makes distinctions between faces. That's true. And I'm not out here saying, you know, I'm just saying, I think most of us are regular faced. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? No, no, I remember I used to watch America's Next Top Model and I'm like, I feel like this is the one percent of the one percent of the world. Like, I don't think everybody is t- is actually like top notch beautiful. I think most of us get by. Like, it's like, oh, like we're just. But who's cute. The, who's the, who's the determiner of that? Like, who? I mean, obviously I, I culture. Determer, but yeah, obviously culture. Yeah, because I mean, in the early nineties, you could walk around with a pen- pencil eyebrow, and that was considered beautiful. You yeah. Do that now you look a little. Yeah, and so like even body types, it's kind of like in the nineties, you can be a Skeletor. It's just like, oh, she's so beautiful, like she's gonna <laughs> die. <laughs> Walk around, just a shoulder blade popping out. It's like that she's so gorgeous, and it's like now, you know, what I'm saying everybody got the little BBLs. <laughs> you know what I mean? You like, like BBLs? You want me to get one of them? Absolutely not. Why not? Because I, mean, I don't want one. I think it. it I'm not gonna. Yeah, I don't want one. No, so. you don't need to get a BBL because you're beautiful just the way you are. Oh, so I'm, I'm I'm specifically attractive to you. Absolutely. Gosh. You ain't got four kids for nothing. Wow. <laughs> what anyway, are we talking about today? Anyway, I don't even know the title of this, but it's it's something around headship, masculinity, maybe complementarianism. We don't even really know. Most yeah. of these podcasts, we have a general idea mm-hmm. of what we want to talk about. And then it just kind of goes where it goes. And it's always stuff that we talked about in the house. Oh, yeah. This is always a, a what do you call that? Like, this is a, a pouring over, Facts. a rehashing of what we've already discussed. And so that's probably why it's not as nuanced as it could be. One, we got 30 minutes. Two, we just out here just really just talking. Yeah, we're, we're talk. Like, so, so, so to think we're going to hit all the bullet points is crazy. Yeah, so what, so what do you want to touch on first? Okay, so the Bible in Ephesians 5 says that men uh, is the head of the wife, like Christ is the head of the church. That don't, that don't make nobody feel good. <laughs> Why doesn't that make it people make feel good? It make men feel good. Huh? Why doesn't it make people feel good? Because I think the, 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 the idea or the picture of a man being a head is like a man is in a position of authority over me yeah period and so one that ain't cute like i don't i don't want a man to be in a position of authority over me one because there's some women that like that oh i can't wait till my king come home so i can submit to him tonight <laughs> do they though because i all i am very skeptical <laughs> of there's every, some women out there like listen that. let me explain i am very skeptical of anybody that's like, oh, I just can't wait to be submissive. Oh my God, like submissive is just the best thing in the world because the sinful nature is deceptive. Okay. Because to me, if you're excited about submission, you probably don't actually know what it is. <laughs> because if submission is just cooking brownies, and cooking cookies, that's not, that's not submission. That's yeah. just, you're just a chef. Like, that's just not, <laughs> that's not what that is. It's like, so sub- let's talk about it. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, submission yeah. is going to come against what you want. 
in what you want to do oftentimes. So anyway, I don't know how we got there. So yeah, I, I think <laughs> the, the, the idea of headship in a, in a marriage is, is off-putting and anxiety-inducing. And I think for one is that because of the sinful nature, everybody wants to be an authority over everybody. Yeah. That's one. Two, uh, some of us, not all of us, have not had, had good history with men whether it's our fathers, whether it's with past relationships, even, you know, friendships that have made that seem like a safe choice yeah. to be in, you know, be under the authority of a, of a man. And then three, y'all got issues. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's easy to say, oh, I'm going to trust God as an authority figure. He's perfect. He's sinless. Y'all aren't. And so let's talk about it. Yeah, I think... Uh a lot of times when people think about headship, they can automatically have like this negative, oh, for sure. uh, this negative thought. And I think, I think it's because of a couple of reasons. I think, like you said, I think it's because of the abuse of so many men in the past or just seeing so many relationships and so many marriages being modeled in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. But also culture. Culture teaches us that headship is dominance, mm -hmm. and and it's really not. Like I think for us to really look at headship in the most biblical way, I think we have to go back to the beginning of creation, mm -hmm. which is Genesis, when God created man and woman. And when He creates man and woman, <clears throat> we see that before He created Eve, He created Adam, and then He gave. Adam, um, the the authority to name all of these animals, right? And so he begins to name all of the animals and, and, and all of this. And so when Eve joins him um, later on, um, you know, God says, I have given you dominion over the earth. The word dominion, the word dominance derives from the word dominion. And so we see creation having dominance over a particular thing in creation, but not with each other, not with man and woman, right? Right. And so we see like Adam and Eve, like like Adam is the one who first names all the animals before Eve is even created. He's given the mandate to 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 watch over this garden. He's given a mandate not to eat from this tree. He doesn't repeat these commands back to Eve. But when Eve comes on later on and join him, God trusts, you know, Adam to like with to uphold the integrity of what he originally, the command that he originally gave them in the garden. But the whole dominance thing, we don't see that, that, that God gave Adam dominance over Eve. Mm -hmm. We see that God gave humanity dominance over creation, mm -hmm. right? And so men, so when it comes to dominance, I think I, I, think I want to just set a tone for just what, what dominance is for hu humanity. Someone would argue, we're going to get back to your point. But someone would argue that Genesis three, when it says that uh, the 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 when it says that the a part of the curse that God gives to Adam and Eve that your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. Some would argue that that is actually the beginning of patriarchy. So that when we get to Ephesians five, the headship is more so a consequence of, or the, the, the notion that a man is supposed to be an authority figure over a woman is a part of the fall and not endemic to I've heard that creation. I've heard that argument before, um, but, before we, but before we even get to the argument, what I want to focus on is the original, okay. the original, the design that to, God... To show the antagonistic <laughs> point of view. <laughs> yeah, 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 because I think it's important for us to get there, but I, but I, I, I think... I think it's important for us to, to focus on the original, the design of, of, of the, in, in the order of creation of God creating this man and creating, you know, the animals, giving him the, the, the authority to name the animals. And, it, you know, and so like, look at, I want us to look at, you know, like when, 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 when Adam looked at all the, all the animals was like, man, like I have all of these animals that I named and all of these animals have, you know, a helper suitable for him and I still don't have anybody, right? And that was the first time in the Bible that God said it's not, something is not good when he said it's not good for man to be alone. And then so when he creates Eve, uh, the, the first human words we see recorded was a poem, was, was Adam looking at this woman and spitting a poem and saying, this, this, this is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. This, mm -hmm. She should be called woman because she was taken out of a man. And so we see Adam... 
he doesn't see somebody that he can dominate and he can rule or he can control, but he sees somebody that he can love. He sees somebody that will help him fulfill the, the, the will of God for his life. And so I do think that it's, it's important for us when, we, when, when men in particular think about headship, we have to think about headship in this way, in this, in this, in, in this way of, of looking at our wives as somebody who can come alongside us and help us complete the, the, the will of God for our lives. So I think what sin did, you know, to go back to your point was sin messed everything up. It didn't just disconnect us from the father, but it disconnected us from right relationship with one another. And so everything got messed up. And so a man became more dominant. Men became more domineering in their pride. Women became less submissive in helping a man complete that that, you know. But like I think what real headship is, is Christ like sacrifice for your spouse. And I think uh, what submission is, is a, it's a woman coming alongside a man, not not becoming less than a man, not becoming less significant than a man, but helping that man. Or, and I think vice versa, man helping that woman fulfill the will that God has for her life. And so I don't I don't think that we should think about headship in a sense of dominance because the Bible doesn't um, paint it that way. I think what's so hard is how what you're saying is so inconsistent with what we see. Yeah. And so it can be hard to believe that headship is actually a good thing when all you, not all, but a lot of times throughout history, all you seeing is men in positions of power abusing it so that women are less than, they are treated as less valuable, less, less valuable their intellect is not honored, their, their positions are not privileged like their their bodies are taken advantage of and used for their own sexual perverted purposes like all you see is 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 ninjas taking headship and using it for demonic means yeah what are we supposed to do with that i think that we're supposed to correct it with with modeling true christ-like headship and submission and what is that i think that looks like a man like because i because i because i think I think that they're, I think it's all jacked up. I think human relationships are all jacked up because of the fall, right? And so the way we see God and the way we see each other is, is just jacked up since the beginning, right, um, of, of, of the fall of humanity. And so because of that, I think that you're always going to have women who abuse men, but you're, you're always going to see more of an abuse from the other side because men historically have been the more, you know, dominant, yeah. uh, you know, you know, sex throughout history. And so I think that modeling Christ-like headship is showing, you know, that real Christ-like leadership is sacrificial. It is not necessarily making all the decisions. I, I did a podcast with this guy a couple of weeks ago, and it was a podcast. Um, this guy has a majority of like men following, and we were doing this podcast, and they really wanted to know in this podcast what is you know Christ like headship, it, like you know like one of the guys on the podcast was like, I feel like I should just make majority of the, of the decisions. Oh wow! And I pushed back on that, and I was just like, I don't think that's I don't think that's, I don't think that's what what red head, flag. I don't think that's what I don't think that's necessarily what headship <laughs> is. Uh-huh. Because, like, because, one, I'm not saying that a man, and I'm not saying I'm not a, the leader of my home, but what, what I think a, a good leader does, right, of a home is recognizing the strengths of those who he's, who he's leading. And so if someone that I'm leading is stronger than, in an area than me, right, mm-hmm. uh, I'm going to trust them to, to drive the boat sometimes, mm-hmm. right? I would be a bad leader, mm-hmm. right? And I would be and arrogant. E- and arrogant and, and egotistical and a stupid leader, mm-hmm. <laughs> to be hey, quite frank. Come on here. If I if I, I if like I if I try to uh, to 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 suffocate someone's um, strengths for the sake of my leadership, mm. right? Or your ego, really? And my ego, yeah. right? And so, like, that's what a real leader does. I, and, and and so we kind of went back in this this banter. Some of you might, guys might hear this podcast, but no, seriously, in the in the in the in the podcast, 
we uh, we went on this banter, and it wasn't that we were disagreeing, but we just kind of saw things differently. And I gave him this example of, um, you know, basically he wanted to know what is like what does leadership mean then if I can't make the decision? Like to him, it didn't make sense. Yeah. Right. And I, you know, and I, I gave him this example of when I worked at Radio Shack before I started doing poetry heavy. Mm-hmm. And I was really close with my with my my boss, um, the manager. Her name is Martha. She was a great, great, um, great leader. You know what I'm saying? And I just had strengths that she just didn't have. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we sold majority cell phones. I was better at uh, with interacting with people on the floor. Mm-hmm. And so when a lot of people came inside the inside the the store a lot of people thought that i was the manager Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and that's because i what i didn't i didn't try to like take over her job take over her role but she gave me the freedom to do what i was strong at to Mm -hmm. to the benefit of the store Mm -hmm. long story short what i told him was i said even though i was kind of like you know making a lot of the decisions and telling her we should do this telling her we should do that when the district manager came and Mm -hmm. checked on the store Mm -hmm. I didn't have to answer to the district manager. Mm-hmm. She did. Right. Right. And, and, and it always showed me and it always put me back in like right perspective that even though I'm, you know, my, you know, she's letting me drive the boat sometimes. Like when the district manager comes, I have to she has to answer to the district manager and I, and I, and I don't. And I say that to say this, that a, a leadership for a husband kind of looks the same it doesn't look like we have to dominate every single de- decision because the reality is our wives are going to be gifted in areas that we're not gifted in mm-hmm. our wives are going to have strengths in areas that we're not sh- strong in but i think that sometimes christ-like leadership you know looks like recognizing the strengths of your wife and allowing her to you know to to make moves because not only do you trust god but you trust the woman that god is giving you and so what would you say, because I'm only anticipating ob- objections and even fears, what would you say to a man that hears you say that and they fear that giving their wife too much room will eliminate their own authority or control over their household and their marriage? Does that make sense? I think that's what trust has to come. Okay. That's good. It's, it's just it, it, not only do you have to trust God— but I don't say this to try to sound mushy. I completely trust you. Mm-hmm. I trust your wisdom. You don't try to boo boo on my my headship. Aww. You don't. And That's if you sweet. did, you I, you know what kind of person I am. You, you know I'll, I'll I'll get angry or. Mm. <laughs> she said, mm. <laughs> I'm getting a little, a little spicy. No, but I'm I'm saying though, like it it will it it would cause friction between us, and and it, and it has, and it has, and we've had to work through that, and it and it, but it but it should because I feel like it. it, it in the same way, if I demean or try to like undermine who you are as a woman, I feel like you should push back at right, it. Right. It has to be a mutual respect. And so I think that you've given me the confidence to say, man, I trust your leadership in this way. Mm-hmm. And I've also given you the confidence to say, man, I trust your leadership in this way because mm-hmm. you are a leader. Mm-hmm. Like even though I'm the leader of my home, you're, you, you still are a great leader in your own respect. Right. And so for me to muffle that mm-hmm. does not serve my home. And so that's why I try to tell men when I when I mentor them, when I talk to them, for you to muffle the leadership of your you mean wife. Muscle, muzzle or muffle? I'm, I don't oh, know. muzzle, okay. muzzle. I just didn't want no, you. no. See, that's that, this is a perfect example. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, do I interrupt of, of being now, a helper, or do I wait? <laughs> Do I submit now or maybe, later? Maybe saying muffle like don't speak. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, muzzle, muzzle, yes, muzzle. <laughs> you said it so strongly. Yeah, yeah. If you muzzle, like if you if you try to like like let's say taint or like mm-hmm. you know restrict, restrict. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the like the natural leadership qualities in your wife. I think it just doesn't serve your home, and I've seen our home be benefited when I allow you to operate. Like, cause I could, cause I can easily like be like, "Oh, who are you to come and say like, I'm the leader?" And it's like it would make for a really terrible marriage. It 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 would. It really would. But I don't even do it. I don't even do it because I'm trying to keep peace in our marriage mm-hmm. because I think that's where passivity comes. Okay, explain that. Because I think that a lot of people don't, a lot of men don't, um, don't speak up because they're trying to keep peace. Or they're trying to like, or they don't want to like make their wives mad or they, or they, you know, you know, are letting their wives kind of like just take control or run over them. I don't think that we should do that either. Do you want to mention 
yeah. your conversation with Brian? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Not even not even my conversation with Brian, but uh uh oh what what conversation are you talking about? Because because I think passivity oh, is, yes. is is interesting. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Because now. we usually as, I think per, passivity is a kind of certain personality. So it's a timid, mild man. Yeah. You don't come off as a passive man, but Brian, our old pastor, yeah. actually called you out on yeah. passivity. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he called me out, and, and it, it was the first time somebody called me out of being passive. He was like, you're not passive because you don't let people talk to you any kind of way. You're not a quiet, timid man. But sometimes you can fall, you can get into this relaxed mode where you just want Jackie to make all the decisions because you don't feel like it. That's still a form of passivity. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh. That is. And so I had to, I had to, I had, you know what I'm saying? And I, and I thank him for that because I was like, okay. Cause it got, it kind of got easy for, for, for me not to think about things at times. And I was like, okay, let yeah. me, let me, let me, let me step up in, in that area. Yeah. But also too, we went to church with a guy at the time who, who a lot of people looked at because he was complete opposite from me. Yeah. You know, when people came to the church, people didn't see you talking. People saw me leading the the evangelism team. People saw me yada 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 like talking and, you know, you know, and all this stuff and like t- teaching in the church. But this particular person that was going to our church, he was very quiet. Mm-hmm. He he seemed timid at times. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people looked at him as a passive man. Yeah. But then when I got the chance to know him, I was like, no, he's actually not passive. And I think a lot of times mm-hmm. we equate passivity to people's personality types. Right. When it's just not, I don't think it's fair. Yeah. And so I think that even, way, even the way we see, uh, even the way I think we've kind of like misjudged like headship, I think that we, the way we look at passivity mm-hmm. is, is off. Because what's interesting about this, this conversation is with that person, what we actually saw was gentleness. Yeah. Which is a trait of a qualified elder. But what we look for in our elders is authoritarianism. Yeah. And so we actually need to be looking for men that aren't just lions, but men that are also lambs. Yeah. And that's that's good. that, that that's that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> you but know see, what I'm but do you see the irony in that? Because yeah. I think that sometimes we say we don't want a man that's domineering and think they they have to con- we have to control us. But at the same time, a woman can say, "You right." Oh, if he's if he acts this way, I don't respect them. And it's like, you want a man that's, that's, that's dominating everything around him, him except you. And it's like, <laughs> right? You, wanna, you want this. Yeah, I do like aggression. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And so, it's like, so, so I think what, what women have to say is like, man, you want this aggressive man. You can't all the way blame him if that aggression sometimes spill over to y'all relationship. You're not talking about abuse, though. No, not abuse. I'm just saying, like... I just want us to be clear. Like, I don't want to do that right now. We're going to do this. Like... Boys got real deep. Yeah. Yeah. Like... Because I've seen, you know, women like, who you talking to? You know what I'm saying? But it's like, oh, you wanted... Mm -hmm. You didn't didn't want the little... The little sheep, you want to rawr. You, you sound like a uh, uh, symbol when he was by himself. You know what I'm saying? Playing, trying to get the attention of the people. That's exactly what you sound like. You didn't sound like Mufasa. <laughs> wow, now you just sound like a bear <laughs> <laughs> with an empty stomach. Anyway, um, but do you see what I'm saying, though? No, I get it. And so, I think that we have to, we have to, we have to like be consistent. I think in what we want from. A leader, you know what I'm saying? Because I think that sometimes, you know, we don't like to feel like we're controlled, but we do. I think we all sometimes contribute to, uh, as a society, teaching men that you have to be this to be a leader. And then sometimes it's possible for that leadership to get, it can look muddy. Like like a man doesn't know how to, how 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 to delegate that. How have you, encouraged men who because i can imagine that a man who is a bit more gentle that he would think that his leadership is not sufficient right because of his personality type because you know the hyper masculine culture the leaders are these domineer domineering aggressive assertive figures but not everybody is like that but it doesn't make you less of a leader just because you don't lead in that way yeah and so how do you encourage those men to actually to, to, to be to feel secure in the way that God has made them and what he's called them to. I think it's about balance. I really think it's about letting the Lord, like seeking the Lord for balance. Mm-hmm. Because when we look at Jesus, 
we see that he was such a balanced leader, mm -hmm. right? He was gentle, but he was assertive when he needed to be. He asked questions, but he also gave commands. Like he, he was just, he balanced like leaderships so well. And I think, and it, I, I guess this question, this answer is to answer for the, for the, the man who finds himself being passive and the man who finds himself being more, you know, dominant in, in this way. If that's even, if I can even use that word. Because I think for me, I can only speak for myself. When I first married you, I was just too intense extremely i was just too intense and yeah. that but that's just my personality yeah and we was just bumping heads and i'm like but that's like this is who i am and right. like and, and and you just had to like you and leader brian and our pastor had to like show me like preston like like god is calling you to be a lamb too mm -hmm. like he's just calling you to be this aggressive mm -hmm. and it's not it was work. like you were kind of trying to bully me into submission oh man come on man <laughs> No, that's what it, it's, it's like. It's, see, it's like a person trying to hold your head down. Yeah. And that's just, like trying to force me to be submissive is literally the worst way. I know. I get that now. No, I'm, I'm just saying. Don't, I had to, Don't make me feel bad. Don't feel bad. I'm just saying, though. because there's, there's no there, condemnation for, for those, those who are in Christ. Christ. Come on, preach to me. Yeah. Preach to your me. Your sins are, are in the sea of forgiveness. But see what I. What but I, I swim in them sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. But see, that was my natural personality. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I thought in my mind. What I'm doing is loving us. I'm trying to help right. us, right. right? And so I wasn't, you know what I mean? But then when I began to learn, like that's when Brian, like some months later, had to correct me. Okay, Preston, you was a little too tense, mm -hmm. but now you kind of fall back too much. Uh -huh. And so it's like, okay. Yeah. I got to. Yeah. And so like it, it it's was. like basketball. No, yeah. it's like boxing. Yeah. It's yeah. like you got to right, make the right adjustments or whatever. And so like then it was kind of like, okay. I'm not called to rule over this woman in the way that God has called humanity to rule over creation. Mm. But I'm also called to be a leader and my voice is valuable in my home. And God, you look at me as the priest of this home and the leader of this home. And it's like, man, like, how do I, how do I seek the Lord in a certain way for him to reveal to me what are the particular strengths of my wife? What can I entrust my wife with, you know, like, and, and not try to like muzzle her voice in our home. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and, 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 and what can I do? Right. And so like, I think that for me, I had to find like this, cause I think every marriage is different. I think I had to find this, this, this balance of being, I guess what I'm trying to say, a wise leader. Cause I think, it, I think that's, it really boils down to, to leadership. It's not always about man, we should automatically do this. This is what a rule book should look like because, because leadership looks like you being wise and leading your particular home and your particular wife, right? And so like the way I lead you, it's not going to be the way my friend leads his wife. It's just not because we're, we're different. And so I think that if we try to like come to our marriage with this particular like order, we're going to like so you brought up trust, trust, and yeah. how trust is a, uh, a, a a valuable piece of your ability to lead. Yeah. But what does a man do when he doesn't trust his wife? And if it's legitimate, like she legitimately may be unwise, she may legitimately may make certain decisions that are not helpful for the home. Yeah. How does he? Yeah. What's he supposed to do? Yeah, your trust for your wife should always start for your trust for the Lord, with your trust for the Lord. Because mm -hmm. if it doesn't start there, you're never going to trust your wife. Interesting. Right? Because it's like, like, because cause for me, I haven't like every idea that you came up with. <laughs> I do have a lot of them. You have a lot of ideas, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But like one, I think that... Uh, tell me one. What's one idea? Oh, uh, we don't have to go there. No, tell me. We don't, we don't have to go there. I want to know. No. I don't look. Oh, because it's gonna make me mad. You woke up with an attitude. Why would I? You right. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. That's called. That's wisdom. That's wisdom. Go ahead. And that's leadership. Yeah. It's like, you know what I'm saying? You said I just modeled no, that. This podcast will completely change. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then the whole time you like. So why you didn't tell me that? You know what I'm saying? No, like, I'll no. probably just be quiet. <laughs> I just <laughs> we just ended at twenty two minutes. It's, it's twenty minutes with the parents. Yeah, that's probably what. All right, y'all. That's what it would be. All right, go ahead. <laughs> But no, like, I forgot what I was saying. Yeah, uh, trusting the Lord helps you trust your spouse. Yeah, I, I feel like trusting the Lord will, will, will help you trust your spouse. Now, now is, 
there uh there are going to be times where even, you know, you're seeking the Lord about your spouse and you still don't have a lot of confidence in your spouse decision making um, ability. Yeah. But I think that's when you're going to have to have some some real honest conversation. That's what leadership is. It's, yeah. it's saying, you know, it's not boo booing on her and saying like, like, you, I don't trust you. Just step to the side. Yada, yada. It's like. As a leader, how can I help you make better decisions? How can we talk about decisions together? And how can, you know, and, and then even when you talk about it, it's like, man, how am I making you feel like after we talk, we're always choosing my ideas and not and not yours? Um, if we're always choosing my ideas and not yours, can, instead of you being mad at me, can we talk about why I feel like as a leader, I want to go in this direction? Yeah, yeah. Yada, yada, yada. It's, 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 it's you know like bearing and like being loving and i think that that's i really think it's all about wisdom and love like if we are truly loving our spouse and that's something that i had to learn because i like when we first got married and i felt like we should talk at the moment i was very upset when you said when you say i don't want to talk but in my mind we got an issue right. Right. we should talk right now that's right. what i thought like why why don't we, why do we have to wait to wednesday when it's monday <laughs> And it's like, nah, like what God had to show me was you a person, you a whole like like I'm you're not my puppy. Mm -hmm. You're a person. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Huh. And so if you're not ready to talk right now, how can I be humble enough to meet you where you're at? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so I think it's about wisdom and love, compromise, mm -hmm. you know, um, and even when I lead you, like, am I leading you in the most healthy way? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? You're really wise. You're a wise man. Oh, thank you. No, this isn't this isn't current. Like if I was a man, we, we wouldn't even be together. You probably wouldn't have the wisdom if I was a man. That's what's but up. If I was a man listening to this, I would be encouraged. Maybe. <laughs> Depends Perhaps. on what kind of man you is. That's true. Because there's, there's some men right now who like, he don't know what you're talking about. Talking about <laughs> I imagine. I don't want to assert as if I know, but I think I'm right. So I imagine that men who dominate their wives that one of the motives at play is not only control because control is like a a symptom underneath the control is insecurity and fear so if a man is trying to control his wife and i'm and i'm leaving men with mental disorders and demons out okay <laughs> Because that's the thing, like, it's some of them that's just demonically possessed or some of them need, like, intense forms of therapy. I'm just talking about just the normal man who just can't let up because there's a fear there or insecurity. How do we deal with that? How, how do we just let go and, like, lead in love instead of leading by, like, like trying to huff and puff and, and blow everything down? That all, I, th I think, I, man, to be honest, I think that all starts. Let me back up. Let me say this. Okay. One time you told me, you said that dominating a woman is easy. Mm -hmm, it is. Leading a woman with love is scary, therefore harder. It is. Like, that's, that's what I'm trying to get at. Because I think, what, I think what people have to understand is that true Christ-like headship is just as scary as submission. Explain. Because I think when I you know think the answer, of, but you know. I think when you think about submission, I think you think, oh, I have to like surrender my will to my husband. That's what it sounds like. You know, and I think what what Ephesians five does, it talks about equal submission. Because Christ like sacrificial love is a form of submission. Mm -hmm. It is surrendering a lot of my will to love you. Mm. Right. And so and so it isn't it isn't necessarily making all the decisions all the time or being the one who calls all the shots. It is like, it literally says, husbands, love your wives like Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. How did Christ do that? He loved the church before the church loved him back. Mm -hmm. And he loves the church even when the church fails him. Mm -hmm. And so what God is calling the husband to do is to literally do that. Mm -hmm. It's saying, no, even when your wife is mean to you, I'm still calling you to love her even when she doesn't submit. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm literally calling you to be like the more vulnerable person in the situation, <laughs> which was Jesus. It's like, how is it not vulnerable? Yeah. And so if we look at the way Jesus led, he did not come and saying, everybody submit to me. He didn't, 
He didn't say that. He literally came and was like gentle with his people. Yeah. And you know he, what I'm saying? And he, and he died. And he died. Yeah, that's a thing. And so, like, and so, like, if you're truly walking in Christ like headship, you are consistently being in the place of vulnerability. And your vulnerability, I will argue that your vulnerability should be on the table before hers. Because the church so, vulnerability so give us an example of that the church vulnerability like before b b before the church even responded to jesus mm -hmm. jesus made himself vulnerable for us on the cross before the church can even respond mm -hmm. and so i think that if a husband is true if a husband doesn't consistently feel vulnerable in his marriage he's probably not leading well that's what i'm trying to say oh if you feel like the one that's always in control you're probably leading more like a pharisee than jesus because that's what God had to show me. Mm -hmm. God, God literally had to show me, Preston, you've become more like a Pharisee to, to Jackie than Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that, it was hard for me to swallow that pill. But it was true. Hmm. Okay. You looking at me like I said something wrong. No, I just, you're just going off. <laughs> you, you, you're doing good. Can you talk about that time, though? Because like, I, I, I do think that it's important for people to hear how you felt. Oh, yeah. Me. Yeah, like... In, in that season while I, I just I had the you do matter thank you all women matter <laughs> um what you say what yeah like you? like in that season where I feel like I you know our marriage was just difficult and I was trying to learn how to lead you was trying to learn how to submit yeah it just was really stressful because it just even before we got married I worked at a nonprofit and you volunteered there and so we would hang out uh like the on monday nights yeah and i did not like taking you home because i knew that taking you home meant there was going to be some kind of conversation about my sin in Ooh. some way that i could do better and it was just like oh man like i just rather him take the train or, or the bus <laughs> <laughs> because it it's it, it's exhausting to always have our sins put before us you know and be trying to like, tr like being bullied towards, and I don't mean bullied like you were mean. I just mean you were very critical. Um, and so that was just like a lot. I think the shift happened when you just relaxed. I can't, yeah. it, did, it wasn't even spiritual. You just relaxed yeah. and we could have a conversation and it not be about sin and about what I did wrong, or I could make a mistake without being reminded of it immediately. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think when you, when you started to do that, what happened was you became a safer place. Yeah. And because you became a safer place, then that meant that I was more willing to trust you. Yeah, and, and if I'm more willing to trust you, then I'm actually beginning to change and respond to you in the way that you would have had earlier if you were that's just so, calm. That's so good. That's so good. And that's the reason why I wanted, to, I wanted you to touch on that because... And I, I know I, I know I, I'm, I maybe seem like I just, you know, you know, came down on men really hard. No, but it was very gentle. Yeah. Well, everybody not, might not feel that way. But okay. like, yeah, I want people to understand that I'm speaking out of a place of experience, out of a place of just like, oh, I'm the, the best husband because I had to have a lot of trial and error. And I still suck as a husband in a lot of ways. You know what I'm saying? That I'm, I'm, I'm learning how to become better. You don't suck anywhere. Oh, thank you, baby. That was Do you so need sweet. improvement? Yes. But suck? No. I feel like it's relative. You don't suck. Okay. Well, that's encouraging. Well, <laughs> you see? <laughs> see? No, She's like, well, no, now that I think no, about if it. You, <laughs> if you suck on something, it's like minor stuff. Like, you know, picking your drawers up. Or, you know... <laughs> Stop farting. Like, the president is the most fartingest man hey, I've listen, ever met. Like, he just, he just farts all the time. And it's just like, wow, you literally need a, like, a colonoscopy every day or something. You got to fart to live. But listen, <laughs> they can't stand you. I'm flagellants. I'm what? a walking flagellants. What? Flatch. Flatulence. What? Flatulence. That's what I said. You put a D. It's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, That's like right. I was saying, I'm here to help. What? <laughs> Flagellants. What word is that? <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <what? laughs> this is another part of our marriage. Preston says wrong stuff all the time. 
and we actually had a discussion this morning where he corrected me because I be correcting him out loud, and I, he wants me to like stop. Yeah, like stop doing that. Go ahead. But look, what I'm trying to say is, I I wanna on the flip side, I wanna kind of like maybe inform people mm-hmm. about like what I feel the pressure that men go through mm-hmm. to be this leader that I feel like society in such toxic ways has taught them they're supposed to be, mm-hmm. you know, because I think when I first became a husband, I so desperately wanted my marriage to be good and I wanted to be a good leader and I didn't want to fail you know, my church and you and, and yada, yada, yada. I just didn't know how to do it. Mm-hmm. And so what I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, like, I think, when, I think when some women may see, like, this domineering man, I think that uh, not every man, because a lot of men out there are just, you know, some of them just, you know, be bad. 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 But I, I think a, underneath a lot of men, it's, it's just somebody who just wants to lead well. You know, and and probably uh, just hasn't been given like the right tools to 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 lead in the way that God and Christ has called them to lead. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> underneath there might be a man who really just wants to love you well, and he's trying to. Mm-hmm. Um, and 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 low key is discouraged by the lack of submission, and so like even his behavior, he doesn't understand that his behavior is 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 actually stifling you to submit to him in a way that hmm. that's that, good that that you know uh that that he, he wants you to and he's literally discouraged by it mm. you know and that, that that was me i was discouraged by the way that you was not submitting to me and i was like man i suck and i was personalizing it, and i was like man she's not submitting to me mm. and what i what i realized is i allow culture to to like dictate like like what I thought about headship. Yeah. That if a woman doesn't submit to me, it's it's something it's my leadership. But I, but I also think we have to flesh out is is the thing you want her to, to submit to what God wants her to submit to. Because there there is a difference. Yeah. Right. And so if you are calling me to simply I don't know use butter instead of olive oil i'm using something petty but there are there are there were there were some things you wanted to submit to that were really out of your own selfish motives because you wanted me to become a person that would be easier for you to lead when it really wasn't even necessarily something that the holy spirit was probably calling you to no, to lead me in does that make sense that's real so yeah. there, there has to be a distinction that's there. that's that's real but 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 see underneath that this is a, a therapy session for me but uh <laughs> underneath that it's fear right. because it's like i don't want to control you merely because i'm egotistical in this way right. i want to i want to i want to control this narrative because i'm afraid that if i don't my marriage is going to get out of control or i'm afraid that that you're going to run all over me or mm-hmm. i'm afraid like i didn't really feel like i didn't really i wasn't afraid that i feel like you was going to run over run, right. run over me but that might be a fear for for some men right. and so the fear is like what what will happen if i don't have control right and i also think that and i would li- i would like for you to touch on women who feel the need to control the marriage because oh, what does that stem from yeah that, that's going to be a part two Okay, part two is going to be... Next. We can record it now. Okay. All right. That'd be great. See y'all next week. All right. (laughs) 30 Minutes with the Perrys is a production of Ivy Media Podcast. Edited by Angie Elkins. Video recording and audio production by Kim Powell. Artwork by Hop and music by Swoop. Join us on Patreon for early access to With the Perry's episodes and other exclusives. You got two options. You can go to www.patreon.com forward slash with the Perry's or just go ahead, scroll. You'll find the link in our show notes. We are the Perry's. Thank y'all for listening. Now go with God. <laughs>